started to make this video last week while I was on spring break and it kind of fell apart. <laughs> I started the video and then we had a friend of ours from high school pass away and man it just has felt like a whirlwind since then and I just haven't gotten around to getting the second half of my video done so I decided to do just start all over it'll be easier so I'm gonna talk about periods if you don't like that cool um, I wouldn't watch this then. <laughs> um, I feel so lost so yeah my periods for the last I don't know six months or so have been getting increasingly worse I had heavy periods before I had gastric bypass was on depot for a little while. I needed to have a second form of backup birth control after having surgery. Got off the depot because one doctor told me I was too old to be on it and at too much of a disadvantage. Um, because of my gastric bypass surgery, I do not absorb all of the nutrients in my food and in my vitamins. And they're worried about calcium absorption and my bones and oh by the way you're old and you, you can't be doing this anymore basically is what she said so I got off depot I was okay for a while like I said it, it just seemed to get heavier and heavier my periods are very regular um, I'm anywhere from 28 to 32 days so within that you know those few days I know when my period is coming give or take a couple days um, but it's, like I said, it's slowly gotten heavier and heavier. And the last six months have just been unbearable. I have been so miserable. Um, just uncomfortable. I mean, PMS in general, periods suck. And we all know that. But it just seems like the headaches and nausea and cramps and all of the things that come along with having your period have gotten worse. And then the bleeding. The bleeding has gotten completely out of control. I currently use ultra tampons. Those are the biggest, thickest, widest tampons you can buy. They look like freaking cannons. <laughs> They're huge. Um, and like, you know, a regular tampon's only like that big around. These are like this. Those are as big as you can get. And I will bleed through one of those in roughly two hours. Um, I've tried, like I said, the ultra tampons. I've tried menstrual cups of different sizes. Um, all the most giant pads you can find. And I will leak through within a couple of hours. Um, I'm doubling up on protection. I will wear a tampon and a pad, a menstrual cup and a pad because I work at a preschool, I don't always have the option to jump up and run and change things as soon as I feel the leaking coming on. And I don't know for sure when I'm going to start leaking. It could, I could make it three hours or I could make it an hour and a half. You know, it, who knows? So it's difficult to kind of schedule when to change and, and doing it, not being able to just get up and leave. I can't just leave a four-year-old who's having a behavior. <laughs> I'm a special ed para. I just, I can't. Uh, so it makes work difficult and getting up and down on, you know, I'm on the floor. So up, down, up, down on the floor. And that always kind of messes with things and dislodges and makes things uncomfortable. <laughs> it's, it's a hot mess. Sleeping at night is horrific. Again, if I'm super duper lucky, I'll make it three hours without leaking through. So I'm up every few hours to change my tampon, change my pad, empty my cup, whatever it is, you know. And it's emptying the cup and changing the pad. It's changing a tampon and changing a pad. It's not one or the other. It's both things need to be taken care of every few hours. Um, and my periods are, are usually about five days. So day one and day five are probably a normal person's period. It's day two, day three, day four, that I don't even want to leave the house because I might cough or sneeze or laugh too hard. And 
it just explodes. Like if I do something, if I'm on the verge of leaking and I cough, I, I'm gonna explode. And it's just, it's disgusting and it's miserable. And it really does affect the quality of life that you lead during that time period. Not to mention the fact that I don't wanna, you know, I, I, I dread. There's all that dread leading up to having your period and then your actual period and then like I gotta deal with the PTSD afterwards. <laughs> it's, it's just, it's miserable. It's affecting my quality of life. And I worry about <coughs> um, like my iron and my ferritin and that kind of stuff. Because again, I am at a disadvantage for absorption um, of my vitamins and the food that I eat. So I just, I never know what is going to tip the scales the other direction and then I'm going to have to fight to get back and I don't want to have to deal with iron infusions and stuff and I'm, I'm almost 39 so I'm older and I'm done having kids. I have four kids. I, my youngest is five. She'll be in kindergarten in the fall. So I'm older and I, I no longer need these reproductive deals every month. Um, but at the same time, I'm not close enough to menopause to have any hope of this ending anytime soon. So I went to the doctor last week. Um, I had originally contacted them and just asked like, hey, can you put me on a birth control pill or something? This is ridiculous. I'm sick of it. I don't want to deal with it anymore. What can we do? And of course they're like, no, 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 we want you to come in. You, you, you got to be seen. <coughs> so I went in, I spoke to the doctor. Thankfully, he was awesome. He really listened. He was really thorough. He was really caring because of course, as women, we're used to hearing that's what women do. This is just part of being a woman. Suck it up and move on. And I have sucked it up for too damn long <laughs> to hear a man tell me to suck it up anymore. But he wasn't. He was great. He, you know, absolutely understand why you're miserable and you shouldn't have to deal with this anymore. And so he sent me for testing. Um, they tested my um, thyroid because I do have hypothyroidism so they checked to make sure that my TSH was good and that I didn't need a change in my um, thyroid medication they checked my INR to make sure that I didn't have a bleeding disorder that was great I uh, did a, just a general CBC made sure all of that looked fine um, there was one other thing too they checked for and I can't remember what it was now but all of my blood tests came back great so they sent me for an ultrasound and I had an ultrasound done both abdominal and transvaginal um, to take a look at my uterus and my ovaries and all that. They noted that I have a septic uterus, which I knew um, all four of I knew this 20 years ago when I had my first son, he was breech. They didn't know why he was breech, but he was stuck breech when they did the C-section. Um, I took him out that's when they noticed at the time they said it was a dip your heart or your uterus is heart shaped so it had this little dip at the top not a big deal but your your son got stuck in that you know his head got stuck there his butt got stuck down and that was why he was breech that was also why why it was breech um the girls were both head down but at that point i had other medical issues that made it so that i couldn't even attempt a vaginal birth with any of my kids. So I had four C-sections. Um, with each, each C-section, there is more and more trauma done to the uterus. Each pregnancy, each C-section, including um, my miscarriage, all of that is trauma to the uterus. And with each trauma to my uterus, that septum grew. So it started out being just a dip. Now it is a full on septum. There are two canals in my uterus. Um, there is no way they could fit like, um, when I just lost the word, an IUD. Uh, an IUD would not fit. They could put it in one side, but then they would have to put a second one in the other side. Otherwise I might stop bleeding from this side, but I'll still bleed from this side. 
and they don't even know if they could fit two IUDs in there and then just the difficulty of trying to get things where they're supposed to be it's just it's not possible it's too big it's too long it covers too much of my uterus at this point so that's no longer an op that's just not an option um hormonal birth control yes I could take a birth control pill but as soon as I got off the pill this would just start all over again and he said basically what's happening is as this septum has grown it has given my uterus more space to grow an endometrium so I have more space that means more tissue that means more bleeding and that is never going to go away um, again I could stop my periods with birth control hormonal birth control but as soon as I stopped taking the pill if I forgot to take a pill um, that bleeding would just pick up where it left off before so well, it is an option and it is a short-term option. It is not a long-term option because again, I'm a decent amount of time away still from menopause when this would just stop completely. Uh, next, he said, that, first of all, <laughs> they want to put a camera inside my uterus to have a look around. Um, they've done the ultrasound that kind of shows some of it, but you can't get a real close look and make sure that everything they're seeing is what they're seeing so what they can do is take a camera and go in there um, they can also do and I can't hystero something and I forget and I had one done uh, back when I was going through infertility treatment and I know back then when they did it you could see the dip in my uterus but it was a dip it was not a septum it was just a dip um, they want to put a camera up there, take a look around. They want to do the hystero, whatever, again, where they inject the dye and use an x-ray and get a really good image of what the shape of the uterus is and are the fallopian tubes open. That, I mean, that was mostly why they did it last time was to find out shape of uterus and if my fallopian tubes were open so that eggs could actually enter and so on and so forth. Um, but obviously all of this needs to be done in gynecology he spoke to everybody in the office mind you this is the freaking mayo clinic i go to the mayo clinic the like biggest freaking deal in medical hospitals and what have you people come from all over the world to come to my town to go to my mail because this is the founding mail nobody in that office wanted to touch my uterus <laughs> nobody wanted to go near it he asked all of the doctors there if they would be willing to take the camera and go in and look or if any of them would be comfortable trying to insert an IUD every single doctor said no thanks <laughs> we'll pass send her over to gynecology <laughs> let those the, the professional uteri people deal with this because no thanks <sighs> so I have made an appointment for like a week and a half from now I will go in, they will go in with the camera and the dye and the x-ray and they will take a good look around and get an official, this is what your uterus is, which I kind of already know. I kind of already, I didn't know my septum had gotten so big. So that's new to me, but I knew that it was in there. Um, and this doctor said that they had discussed the best thing being to go in and remove that septum they could go in surgically and basically just scrape my uterus out just go in scrape it all out like an ablation which is something that I had asked to have done previously and they told me no because I wasn't close enough to menopause but now they would be willing to do it knowing how bad it's getting and then that I am a little older so what they could do is go in remove the septum, scrape it all out, do an ablation, and just clean me out. And hopefully that would carry on until I hit menopause. I said to him, if you're gonna put me under and they're gonna perform surgery, can you just take the uterus out? I'm done. I have four kids. <laughs> I am done having babies. I no longer wish to have any more children I no longer wish to menstruate I have no need for that part of my reproductive system anymore it's causing me problems it's affecting my quality of life and if they're gonna go in there anyway 
can't they just take the uterus out while they're there? I mean, phew, done. You don't have to scrape anything. You just yank that sucker out. He said, yes, yes, they can. In fact, that was brought up as a possibility if it was something that I was interested in. I still need to talk to the actual gynecology department and get everything, you know, I still have to do all of that. <laughs> Especially so, uh, you know, insurance pay for it. But he said, yes, that is a very viable option. They would just go in, snip it off, pull it out, sew it up. I would no longer have a period. I still have the hormones for my ovaries, but I would no longer have a period, um, number one. And number two, I would no longer have to have pap smears because I would no longer have a cervix. And because I no longer have a cervix, I no longer have to worry about cervical cancer and pap smears and all of that junk that I, like he said, he goes, you still have another 30 years of pap smears left in your life. This would get rid of that altogether. You would never have to worry about uterine cancer. You would never have to worry about cervical cancer. You would never have to worry about pap smears anymore. You would never have to worry about periods anymore. Who gives a crap about menopause? Cause you aren't bleeding anymore. And I, sign me up <laughs> like yes please that is actually the ultimate goal that I had that I was trying to figure out how can I convince them to just take the stupid uterus out because I'm done with it I don't need it I don't want it it doesn't serve a purpose for me anymore and the last thing I want is to be one of those women who has their tubes tied turns 40 and then pff, surprise here's another baby no, thank you. <laughs> no, thank you. I'm done. <laughs> so I go, like I said, in about a week and a half, I will go and I will have all of that extra stuff done and talk to the actual gynecologist and um, decide officially what, what, what decision I will make. Although my husband and I have been talking very heavily and um, leaning very heavily before all of these appointments um, towards having a partial hysterectomy and how much that would improve just our marital business. <laughs> how much easier that would make things for us at all, you know? <sighs> so anyway, I'm at Target now and I've got a prescription that I have to drop off. So that's the lowdown. I will let you know more after I talk to the gynecologist in a week and a half and find out for sure what's happening, when it's happening, and all the other goodies that come along with that. Oh, look, you can see Target. Target. <laughs> anyway, thank you for watching. As always, feel free to like, subscribe, share, and leave me a comment. Have you had a partial hysterectomy? How long, you know, what time of surgery? How long did it take you to recover? Do you have any tips or suggestions or things that I should ask while I'm at the doctor? Um, I'd love to know. So, uh, yeah, let me know. And I will see you later, guys. Bye. Ready? Boo.